Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to solve the 32nd question from CBSC Class 10, 2023-24. Additional practice questions for Mathematics Standard with subject code 041, section D where each question is of 5 marks. Now this question has an OR question as well. So we will be discussing both the questions in the same video. And this question belongs to the quadratic equation chapter. Manu and Aiza are competing in a 60 km cycling race. Aiza's average speed is 10 km per hour, greater than Manu's average speed, and she finished the race in half hours less than Manu. Find the time taken by Manu to finish the race and show your work. Let us try to understand the question first. Manu and Aiza are competing in a 60 km cycling race. That means the distance they are cycling for is 60 km. Aiza's average speed is 10 km greater than Manu's average speed. That means Aiza is going at a higher speed as compared to Manu. So if she is going at a higher speed, then she finishes the race earlier. So here they have given in the next line that she finished the race half hour less than Manu. So if Manu took 2 hours for example to complete the race, Aiza completed it in 1.5 hours. That is half hour earlier than Manu. So these are the hints they have given for Manu and Aiza. We have to find out how much time was taken by Manu to finish the race. Now let me write down the details for Manu and Aiza in terms of distance, time and speed. Now for Manu and Aiza, the distance travelled is going to be same because both are travelling for 60 km. So you can see I have written for both of them the distance is 60 km, 60 km. Next comes the speed. We do not see any speed mentioned for Aiza and Manu. So we will consider that Manu is going at a speed of x km per hour. And here it is mentioned that Aiza's speed is 10 km per hour greater than Manu's speed. That means if speed of Manu is x, speed of Aiza is going to be x plus 10 km per hour. Next, let us consider the time taken by Manu to complete the race. So here I have considered it as t1 hours. So Aiza completed the race half hours less than Manu. So if Manu is taking t1 hours, Aiza has taken t1 minus half hours. Remember wherever the keywords less comes, we have to subtract. Here if they had given more, then we were going to add it with the time. Now once we have written the details, let us find out the relationship between distance, time and speed. So here we have written the relationship between speed, distance and time. So speed is equal to distance over time. Now here we have to find out the time taken by Manu. So we are going to rearrange this given formula and write it in terms for time. So rearranging the equation for time, we are just cross multiplying, time takes the place of speed and speed takes the place of time. So time equal to distance over speed. Now once we have got this relationship, we are going to make use of the time taken by Manu and time taken by Aiza. So let me write over here. So time taken by Aiza, that is T2, is equal to time taken by Manu, which is T1 minus 1 over 2. Now we are going to write the time taken by Aiza and time taken by Manu in terms of distance and speed which we have got over here. So for Aiza we are going to write it as distance which is 60 over speed which is x plus 10. So let me write over here. So time taken by Aiza is 60 over x plus 10 as I have written over here is equal to time taken by Manu in terms of distance and speed is 60 over x as shown here minus 1 over 2. Now we are going to simplify this by cross multiplication on the right hand side. So I will be multiplying 2 with 60 and x with negative 1 that is cross multiplication. So we are going to get it as 2 times 60 is 120 minus 1 times x is x divided by now the denominators will multiply each other that is 2x. Now the left hand side stays the same 60 over x plus 10. Now once we get this we are again going to cross multiply that is 2x multiplies with 60 
and x plus 10 multiplies with 120 minus x. So let me write here 2x times 60 is equal to let me put x plus 10 in a bracket. So x plus 10 times 120 minus x. Next simplifying it further 2 times 60 is 120. So 120 x on the left hand side is equal to let us expand the brackets x times 120 gives you 120 x and then x times minus x gives you minus x square and then 10 times 120 gives you plus 1200 and 10 times minus x gives you minus 10 x. Now from both the sides we can see it has 120 x and 120 x so they are going to get subtracted so we can cancel off and we are left with minus x square minus 10x plus 1200 equal to 0. So we are going to change the signs of each term now. So minus x square becomes plus x square minus 10x becomes plus 10x and plus 1200 becomes minus 1200 equal to 0. Next we have to factorize this equation. Either you can use splitting the middle term method or you can use the quadratic formula method as well. I am going to use splitting the middle term method. So 1200 factors are going to be 40 and 30. So here I am going to split the 10x as x square plus 40x minus 30x minus 1200 equal to 0. So here the addition of these two terms should give me the middle term which is 10x and the multiplication of these two terms should give me negative 1200. So these two factors will satisfy the given quadratic equation. Now we are going to just simplify this further and factorize it. So here let us break it down into two groups, first two terms and last two terms. From the first two terms we can take x common and in the bracket we have x plus 40 that is by factorizing it and from the second term we can take negative 30 as a common factor and again remains is x plus 40 equal to 0. So factorizing it further we get one of the factors as x minus 30 and another factor is going to be x plus 40 equal to 0. So one value of x that is x minus 30 is equal to 0. So we get the value of x here as 30 and remember x is the speed which we had taken initially. So speed is 30 kilometers per hour over here. So 30 kilometers per hour and it's going to be x plus 40 equal to 0 or x value is going to be equal to negative 40. But the speed cannot be negative so we have to discard this value and we are going to consider only 30 kilometers per hour. And since x was the speed of Manu over here, so we are going to find the time of Manu as it was given by using this time equal to distance over speed formula. So here for Manu we are going to write the time t1 is equal to distance which was 60 kilometers divided by his speed that is 30 kilometers per hour and it gives you 2 hours. So Manu finished the race in 2 hours and Isa completed it in 1.5 hours that is half hour less than Manu. So here to solve this we have made use of the distance speed time formula. We formed a relationship between Isa's time and Manu's time which is given in the question and then we have solved it just by cross multiplication and using algebra. Now let us move on to the OR question. Now this question is also from quadratic equations chapter. Shown below is a cuboid with water in two different orientations. The length, breadth and height of the cuboid are distinct. The cuboid has 480 cubic centimeter of water which is shown as a shaded region here. If the height of the water in orientation 2 is half of that in the orientation 1 then find the heights of the water in both orientations. Show your work. Now let us try to understand the question first. 
Now they have given us a cuboid and the same cuboid is represented in two different ways and it has been given the name as orientation 1 and orientation 2. And the volume of water in the cuboid is 480 cubic centimeter. Now we have to find out the height of the water in both the orientations of the cuboid. So here let us consider that the height of the cuboid that is the entire height is going to be h in orientation 1. And here we can see that 4 cm of the cuboid is empty. So the height of the water inside the cuboid is going to be the entire height which is h minus the empty space which is 4. So this is going to be the height of water in the orientation 1. And here they have given us the width. So width is given as 5 cm. And the height of the water is h minus 4. Next in orientation 2 they have given us a hint that if the height of water in orientation 2 is half of that in orientation 1. So here we got the height of water as h minus 4. So here the height of the water is going to be half of h minus 4. So let us write here h minus 4. Then we have to find what is the height of the water in both the orientations. Now here we consider the height of orientation 1 as h. Now imagine that I am going to rotate this cuboid this way. So here the height becomes the length of the cuboid when you are rotating it. So here the height turns into the length in the second orientation. So here in the second orientation we get the length as h, height of the water as half times h minus 4 and we have the width as 5 cm. Next let us find out the volume of water inside the cuboid. So here volume of the water is equal to volume of cuboid in the orientation 2 because the water takes the shape of the cuboid. So we can take volume of water equal to volume of cuboid. Now volume of cuboid is given by the formula length times width times height. Now we have all the three with us that is length we have got it as h so let us write here in place of length h times the width we have got here is 5 times now the height is half of h minus 4. So let us write here 1 over 2 times h minus 4. And the volume of water is also given in the question. The volume of water is given as 480 cubic centimeter. So let us substitute in place of volume of water 480 cubic centimeter. Now we have to start solving it. Let us take all the numbers on one side of the equal to sign and all the letters on the other side. So here h and h minus 4 I will keep it on one side of the equal to sign. So h times h minus 4 is equal to. Now 480 gets multiplied with 2. So 480 times 2 and goes on the other side of equal to sign and it divides 480. So let us write here divided by. 5. Now let us simplify this h times h is h square we are expanding the bracket and h multiplies with negative 4 giving us minus 4h is equal to now here 480 and 5 divides each other so 5 1 times is 5 and 5 96 times gives us 480 times 2 so 96 times 2 is 192 so we can see here that we have got a quadratic equation so let us get 192 on one side of equal to signs. So we get h square minus 4h minus 192 equal to 0. Now we are going to factorize it. I am going to use the splitting of middle term. Now the factors of 192 which when added or subtracted gives me negative 4 is negative 16 and positive 12. So here I am going to split negative 4h as h square minus 16h plus 12h minus 192 equal to 0. Now when you add these two you get negative 4h and when you multiply these two you get negative 192. Next we are going to factorize it further. We will group the first two and last two together and take out the common terms. So in this we have h as a common term and here h minus 16 remains in the bracket and here we are going to take plus 12 common factor 
and inside the bracket remains h minus 16 equal to 0. So, we will factorize it again. So, h minus 16 is a common term. So, h minus 16 in a bracket and another bracket has h plus 12 as a factor equal to 0. So, we have two values of h here that is h minus 16 equal to 0 and another is h plus 12 equal to 0. So, here we get h is equal to 16 centimeter and here h is equal to negative 12. Since the height cannot be negative, we are just going to discard this value and consider only h as 16 centimeter. So, here in the question they have asked us to find the heights of water in both the orientation. So, in orientation 1 it is h minus 4. So, let me write over here. So, for orientation 1 we had height as h minus 4. So, h we have 16. So, 16 minus 4 gives us 12 centimeter. So, this is the height of the water in orientation 1. And for the second orientation, we had the height of the water as 1 over 2 h minus 4. So, we have 1 over 2 and h minus 4 we have got it as 12. So, times 12. So, 12 and 2 divides each other 2 1 times 2 6 times. So, we get the value of height of water in orientation 2 as 6 centimeter. So, these are the heights. So, here we made use of volume of cuboid to find out the height of the water in both the orientations. I hope you have understood all the steps and like the video. If you know any other way of solving these examples do comment below. And if you are liking my videos like share and subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching.